Hi, this is Chris Long with SSC Setup, and today I'm going to show you just how easy it is to create and install for a Microsoft Access database using SSC Setup. So here we are on our main SSC Setup uh, project manager screen, and you'll see there's this test play around, mess with, pro mess around with project. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just start a new project here for our Access database. It's again set to start with a new version of that test project, but we're going to click new and for our new install here and I'm gonna enter in let's say cool database for the program name and uh, version uh, put that in here so a lot of times access uh, develop developers or sometimes access developers don't think about their database having versions maybe in the same way that other software developers uh, think about versions for their programs but as far as SSC setup goes um, you're gonna want to specify a version uh, something that differentiates uh, so that because uh, for upgrading purposes in the future when you release an, uh, a new updated version of your database a newer release of your database um, you want to be able to differentiate somehow between the other one uh, the other install uh, if you don't already have a versioning scheme I recommend something like this where you're doing like two digits for the year two digits for the month and then uh, two digits for the day or something like that so now we come down here and we select our program's main file, which for an access database is usually our, our front end database file here. I'm going to select that. Uh, just a side note, if you do have like a split database scenario, uh, there is information in the help file, uh, in the access part of the help file uh, that uh, explains that, um, how to work with that. So then enter in your company name here and website. Those happen to already be pre-filled in from a previous uh, install here I did. Uh, then it's set to go for um, to base this project on our Microsoft Access default template. Um, if you do know that your database requires a specific Microsoft Access command line, uh, command line to for Microsoft Asset Access that you specifically need to have run, then you could change this to this Microsoft Access with command line default. But otherwise, you can just leave that on the default setting here, and we can click start. It's going to tell us that we're starting a new Access project. And it's going to suggest we read a step-by-step -step guide and offer to open that for us. I do normally suggest that you do that. Uh, it will provide a lot more information and more detailed information than I'm going to be able to go into in this video here. Um, and it will just it will walk you through creating an access install as well. And uh, so you want to click yes to that normally, but I'm going to go ahead and click no. We're going to come on. It's going to open up the uh, first screen here, our project editing screen. Before I even talk about this or any of the settings, I just want to mention that we actually already right now have a fully working access install for our database. So right now uh, we have an install that will require access 2007 or greater. Uh, if the user doesn't have it, it will allow them to download and install it. Uh, once they do that, it will proceed with installation and it will install that database file we selected. It will create shortcuts to that on the desktop and start menu. It will uh, handle all the trusted location stuff it'll already be pretty much ready to go um, now really it's just a ma and I can prove that to you by clicking this test button right now uh, I'm not going to do that for time's sake but just a note we do already have a, a fully working install it's really just a matter now of just tweaking it and picking the specific settings that we want to have um, and installing other files and so forth so on this program information page this first page here the first uh, thing I want to point out is the setting program folder. This is the default installation folder that will be suggested for installation. And you'll see it's by default set to go to program files, which is uh, usually where people expect programs to be installed. When it comes to access databases, historically that's been a big no-no uh, because of access rights issues with that folder. But SSC setup works around that by default so that this normally will work just fine. And you can normally just leave that on this default and be fine with that. If you do want to change it, you can by unselecting this box here and then uh, changing it to what you want. You could select, say, root drive, which is like the C drive. And you could put a under a folder under there. Sometimes access developers like to do that. But, uh, um, or you could, uh, I didn't select that, but <laughs> there we go. Uh, or uh, you could remove the version number from the... Um, from the folder as well if you wanted to do that. Uh, normally I do suggest you do leave the version number in there, not remove it. Uh, it just makes it, uh, for clarity's sake, especially when you get into different 
uh, to upgrade scenarios and different versions. If you have uh, different versions, have their own version folder, but uh, it doesn't really matter. You can uh, remove it if you want. I'm actually going to go ahead and put this, check this box back though to put it back to the defaults, to the default settings there. So the next thing I want to point out is this 32-bit, uh, uh, 64-bit setting. If your database requires 64-bit Microsoft Access uh, and will not work on 32-bit, then you want to select that setting there, and that will uh, tell setup that it's only to run on 64-bit OSs and so forth, and we'll just set that up for you. On the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click to the next page now. And this is the prerequisites page, and we can specify operating systems to run on and hardware to require, and all that stuff's change changeable. But what I want to point out is down here, this software prerequisite section. Uh, so SSC setup comes with a lot of uh, prerequisites, including things for like the .NET framework and so forth. Um, you'll see it's already set up here for the access prerequisite check, and it's set to require access 2007 or greater, or and if that doesn't exist, to allow the user to download and install it. Uh, I'm going to click this Edit Conditions button here, and that's going to bring up this Access uh, Deployment Settings page. And this is where I could change my version. I'm going to change that from Access 2007 to 2013. Uh, generally, you want to pick the version of whatever you created your database on, whatever the root office version you created your database on. That's normally what you'll want to select here. And it normally will work fine on later office, later access versions, uh, so you don't need to normally require you don't normally need to select this to require the exact version. So um, I'll just and I recommend usually that people don't select that uh, unless you absolutely need to. But otherwise, this this uh, the next setting down here is again whether the our database works on 32-bit or 64-bit or requires one or the other. And um, there's different rules on that, and that's explained in that help file in the access part of the help file. It'll explain that scenario for you, but because um, it depends on whether you're installing an ACC DB or an ACC DE, uh, whether there's uh, whether you're using VBA with uh, DLLs and or ActiveX controls that are 32-bit or 64-bit and so forth. So um, you'll need to pick which one is appropriate for you. I'm going to leave it on the default here to say it works on both. Um, and next setting here is this trusted location info. It will automatically take care of the trusted location stuff for your where your program is installed in all subfolders. Uh, and that will take care of their not showing any ex of those access security warnings and so forth. So it automatically takes care of all that for you. If you do have another folder that you want to set up for to be trusted as well, you can set that here. But uh, most people usually don't need that. Um, and then this final setting here is to block automatically block Office first run dialogs. Uh, if your if the user does not already have Microsoft Office installed on their computer and they install the Access Runtime on the first run when your database is first opened, uh, the Access Runtime might uh, show some Office dialogs asking them to pick their Microsoft Office update settings, uh, whether they want to be in the customer experience program or whatever it's called. Uh, and so forth. Uh, so by default, this blocks that. So just to create a more seamless experience for the user, where maybe less confusing for them. But if you do want to, uh, if you're fine with those showing, you can uncheck that. There's also an intermediate option too, which is explained in the help file. Uh, but I'm just going to leave that on the default there. Click OK. Click OK on that. And that was just uh, telling us it was resetting the setting here. You'll see that it's uh, still set to, it's set to uh, download and install from within setup. Um, so what this does is by default uh, setup will automatically take into account whatever Office install access versions are already in, on their computer and it will match by default the best runtime for them. That's going to be access 2013 or greater and will allow that one to be downloaded and installed. So it can um, make it maybe a more ideal scenario for them and that prevents some reconfiguration uh, messages and so forth that otherwise might occur. Uh, if you do want to include a specific runtime with your install instead of doing this download install thing, you can do that by uh, using this run included program option here um, and then specifying the, the uh, file, uh, the runtime file. But I'm just going to leave that on this the default here. Um, this 
among other things, it also makes it just for a lot smaller install in, fall, in file size if you leave it on this default, if you're not including the runtime. So I'm going to leave that there, and I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And this is the Installer Looks page, which is just where we control visual elements of the installer, like the graphics and so forth. I actually am going to go ahead and change one of them. There's, it comes with uh, setup comes with a bunch of different graphic choices, and I actually am going to pick pick a different one here. Um, but you can just leave it on the default too, or there's uh, there's several options here <laughs> of things you can do, and you can play around with those. Uh, you could also choose to not show the version number as much uh, in your install, which you might want to do. Um, some access develop, uh, developers might want to do that, not to show the, diver the version that they selected in their installer, and that's fine. You can uncheck that if you wanted. I'm going to go and go to the next page here, which is our um, which is our language and um, license agreement page and so forth. SSE setup is a multi is a multilingual installer. And you'll see it's already set to, to work for a bunch of languages there, and uh, that's all great. If you want to force a specific language, like English, you can do that. Uh, otherwise, you could just leave it on its default here. You could um, specify a different license agreement for each of those languages, or use the default one, which you'll see there's already a boilerplate in here uh, for... Uh, uh, just a boilerplate paragraph <laughs> license, a little uh, disclaimer thing there, which you uh, might want to change for your own situation. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Next here. And now we're on the Install Files page, which is where we install uh, any files we want. You'll see the database that we selected when we started our project is already set to be installed to the Install slash Program folder, which is the folder where the user installs our program. Uh, if you have any other files you need to install, such as a help file, uh, an icon file. If you have an icon uh, that you want to install, you would install that. Install those into the program install program folder. If you have any DLLs or ActiveX controls, OCX files, you want to install those as well. And those usually the DLLs are usually COM DLLs and ActiveX controls. You want to install those usually. In um, I don't have one here, but. Let's present, pretend this MP3 is a is a DLL. Uh, you would install that into, say, um, instead of the install program folder, I recommend DLLs usually, you want to install those into the system folder. And there's either 32-bit or 64-bit, depending on whether those DLLs or ActiveX controls are 32-bit or 64-bit components. So um, you would, you'll need to know that, but you should already probably know that if you're using those in your in your for your database. Uh, based on whether what your database is. So uh, you'd pick the right folder there, and it'll automatically then install those those DLLs and, and register them and so that they will work for your database. Uh, if you if you usually again those are these are for extra DLLs or controls that you would need to install. Um, if you don't have any then you won't you wouldn't need to install them. Uh, and if you don't know for certain you can always check in Microsoft Access. You can use their it has an option to show you the references that your database is using, and any ones beyond the the normal ones that it it normally uses just for uh, just for a brand new database. <laughs> any additional ones, those are the ones you would need to install any of those files. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this line because I don't really need to install an MP3. And I'm going to go to this next page here. Click the next button down here, or you can click up here too. I'm just gonna go to the shortcuts page, and you'll see it's already set to create a shortcut to my database on the start menu and on the desktop. You can change those, create additional ones there. Um, I do just want to briefly point out that you'll see in a lot of these pages there's a lot of bullet points that give you like the basic help points for that page. You can also uh, click this help button down here or press F1 and you'll get more detailed information for all the settings on, on e uh, that's specific for the page that you are on. So I just wanted to point that out. Uh, now we're going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and skip, there's a registry page here, we can skip, you can do registry changes. Um, this page here, we don't need to worry about any of that. If you did change the uh, that default program folder up here from program files to something else, you can choose to remove this setting here if you want, but that's uh, otherwise you don't need to worry about that. And here we are, um, oh, actually I wanted to go back real briefly. Back to that shortcuts page. I forgot to mention one thing. If you did install a, a if you did install an icon file, and you want that icon to show uh, for your database, you can specify that here. If we scroll to the right, 
you'll see these icon settings here and you could select that icon file then and it, that would show for your shortcuts. And now I'm going to go back down here. We're going to go to this miscellaneous page and where we left off there. And um, this, this also here, it's set to show at the end of install. Um, this is, it's set to open up your database file. You can see it's already set to do that by default. Um, there's other settings of this page you can mess around with. Uh, SSC setup has a bunch of features. Um, and uh, down here, I want to point out this, this setting here. This Again, if you installed an icon file, you could select that here. And that would automatically, then that icon would be used in the uninstall interface, Windows' uninstall interface um, for your program. So there's other, again, we're pretty much done now. There's other pages here. You could run additional programs uh, if you need to. Um, usually if you're installing other software, if there's other software you need to require and install, you're going to use the prerequisites page for that, not the run programs page. Um, you can create custom prerequisites in the prerequisites page and handle those all there. And that's normally where you will, where you will do that. But you could run other programs. You could do the same on uninstall. Uh, if there's other files that your database creates that setup doesn't know about, you want to specify this here on this uninstall files page. So, so the uninstaller knows to remove those, knows they're a part of your program. That's that's uh, what that's for. Again, uninstall registry settings. There's an internet updater you can use. You can create. Um, you could have it so that you create a check for updates type option in your database using VBA that interfaces with this internet updater and allows users to check for updates and download and install new updates for your database and it just creates a really seamless experience for them where they uh, it closes the old database opens up the new one and, uh, so that's something you can explore there's a whole information on that you can click here and open that up and follow that guide on that um, and then there's just your info page here and this is where you can specify if you have a digital uh, signature, a code signing certificate, which generally is a recommended thing these days. It's pretty much a, a needful thing these days. Um, you would just, uh, and there's information here. You can click on this, and there's information in the help file that'll take you to on what those are and why you'd want them and how to get one and, and how to use it. Uh, it's really easy with SSC setup, ultra easy <laughs> to do. Uh, so you can assign your installer and make for a better experience for users. Uh, and then down here, um, we're on the final page now, which is the save page. And this is where we can just save our project or create our final distributions, uh, which is what we're, which is what you will be sending to other users. You can create an exe, a zip file, or a CD or DVD. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just keep it on this default here and create the the executable file here. And you want to click this, save, create distribution, and exit. It's going to create our um, our setup here and create our final package. And here we are. You'll see it came up here. It automatically opened Explorer to where that it created the installer. And there it is. And if we... Um, uh, so we're ready to go now to run the installer. I'm just going to go ahead and click that. And right now I'm actually looking at a UAC dialog, which uh, you can't see, um, but it's Windows' is UAC dialog. For technical reasons, it won't show in the video, but uh, it's there. And uh, But you can, just to note that you can create installs with SSC setup that uh, do not require administrator privileges and will not show UAC dialog. So that is something you can explore if you want to. Anyway, here we are on our screen now. It's detecting I do not have access 2013 or greater, telling me I need it. And I can click this button here to download and install it. It's going to do that. It's gonna, uh, because it does take it a, a minute or two here, I'm going to go ahead just for time's sake and, and skip ahead here. Uh, so, I'm gonna Okay, so the install is uh, just finishing up now here. And um, it's going to tell, there it is. It's just finished there. And it's telling us that uh, the download and install was successful. I'm going to click OK on that. It's going to start our install here. And you'll see here's our um, main installation screen. Again, all this stuff is customizable, the, the graphics and so forth. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And there's our license agreement. We'll go ahead and agree to that. And our program is installed. The database is installed. And that takes care of that. If we click OK, it would open the, open the, uh, the database. So 
that takes care of. I hope you've enjoyed this video. That takes care of uh, showing how to how easy it is to create a Microsoft Access database install uh, using SSC setup. For more information on SSC setup, uh, please uh, check out the website that's listed on the screen. Thank you so much for watching.